Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to provide a demonstration of how to generate percentile and bias corrected confidence intervals around your R-square value when performing linear regression and stata. Now before we get started I want to mention that underneath the video description you will find a link to the data file that I'm using in this video presentation so feel free to download the data to follow along. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, I already have the data imported into Stata and the variables that I'm going to be working with are performance goals, achievement, mastery, and interest. So these are the variables right here and we're going to run a linear regression with performance goals, mastery, and interest serving as uh, predictors of achievement. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the do file editor so I'm going to click on that icon right there and so now we're just going to run first off just the basic model we're going to use the regress command follow that up with the name of the dependent variable uh, achieve then the names of the independent variables as they're all appearing in the data set so we have interest mastery and this performance goal variable right here so when I highlight all of this and click on execute selection we now get our output from the basic regression model and you can see the R squared value that is given in our output is 0 0.4044. You'll also see that we have the uh, F test which is uh, used to test the significance of R squared so we see that we have statistical significance so we would infer that the population R squared is greater than zero. And then obviously down below we have the remaining uh, output so we have our regression coefficients their associated standard errors T values and P values and then uh, their confidence intervals so I'm not going to unpack all of that in this video presentation we're gonna, we're, we are just going to stick with uh, generating confidence intervals so next what we're going to do is go back into our do file editor and I'm going to type in bootstrap alright and then we'll follow that up with E and then in a parenthesis we'll type in R2 in parenthesis uh, type a comma and then we're going to type in the option REPS and inside that parenthesis we are going to indicate the number of bootstrap samples that we want to generate so for this demonstration I'm going to stick with a small number of 50 ordinarily you would like uh, you would want to have a lot um, larger number of replications but we're sticking with 50 for this demonstration and also uh, Stata by default when we're using this uh, bootstrap command here uh, it's going to generate a 95 percent confidence interval if we wanted to change the confidence intervals to say a 99 percent or 90 percent uh, we could do that very easily by using the level option and uh, follow, follow up level uh, inside the parenthesis with say 99 if we were going to uh, be uh, calculating 99 percent confidence interval or 90 if we're going with the 90% confidence interval. For this demonstration I'm just going to uh, stick with our 95% default and uh, next what we'll do is we will type uh, a colon or uh, after our reps 50 right there and then we're going to basically type in all the same information that we had in the line above so I'll type in regress then achieve the dependent variable and then the names of our independent variables So when I highlight all of this and click on execute, you'll see that the bootstrap repl replications right here, th uh, that information is uh, provided that uh, we had 50 resamples. And from that, uh, we have our uh, bootstrap output. So you'll notice that we have our observed coefficient. This is actually the R square from the original regression. But now you can see that we have a bootstrap standard error. So basically what, what happened is, is that when we perform the bootstrapping uh, essentially we were resampling from our original sample so the sample is actually serving as sort of a pseudo population we're drawing out uh, repeated random samples with replacement uh, and computing multiple regressions with and the associated R square values so that now we will have an empirical sampling distribution of the R square values so the bootstrap standard error is essentially the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of our uh, R square values that we were computing. You also notice that we do have a Z value that's given here and a P value right here. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have a normal base confidence interval that's given right here. So 
uh, basically the lower bound of the confidence interval is provided here and the upper bound is provided right here. And this confidence interval is probably most applicable in cases where you have a much larger uh, sample size that you're working with and perhaps the R square value being closer to 0.5. So let's go ahead then and generate our, um, our percentile and bias corrected confidence intervals. And that is easily done in our do file right here by just typing in estat, then uh, bootstrap, comma, and then all. So now when I highlight uh, this and I run it, you'll see that I get now three different confidence intervals uh, for my R square value. So again, we have our observed R square that's given right here. Uh, you can see that we have our normal confidence interval. Uh, these values are associated with, or basically what we had above. And then we have the percentile uh, confidence interval uh, that's provided right here. And then we have the bias corrected that is given right here. And in general, my recommendation would be to use the percentile and the bias corrected confidence interval, particularly when you have uh, a much smaller sample size that you're working with and where the uh, sampling distribution of the R square value is less likely to be symmetric. So basically the percentile and bias corrected confidence intervals are asymmetric confidence intervals that can be formed around your R square value. So this can be particularly handy too when uh, you have R square values uh, in a small sample that are closer to zero or one. So basically when you get closer to zero, if you have an asymmetric confidence interval and you're using um, an interval method that assumes symmetry, then what that can lead to are lower bounds. You know, if you're close to zero with respect to your R square, you can have lower bounds that uh, are negative values. And if, you have, and, uh, if you're closer to one, you could have upper bounds that are perhaps uh, greater than one, which are outside the theoretical range for R square value. So to illustrate that concept, uh, I, I've just uh, inc incorporated another data set uh, into, uh, into Stata, and let's just uh, run the analysis. So I've got a Y variable uh, that's given right here, an X1 and X2, so these are pretty nondescript variables. But let's go ahead, and, and what I've done is I've basically created a uh, simulated data set where the R square value would be uh, very close to zero, and the total sample size is actually 30. So let's go ahead and uh, generate our confidence intervals. So I'll go back into my do file over here, and we'll just go ahead and type in uh, regress, then Y, and then on to X1 and X2, just briefly showing you again the basic regression results. And so you can see right here, the R square value is 0 0.0166. So obviously that's very small. And again, our sample size uh, is 30. So now let's go ahead and generate our bootstrap confidence intervals. So we will type in bootstrap, then E, and inside the parenthesis R2, then uh, comma, then reps, we'll stick with 50 for this demonstration, and regress Y onto X1 and X2 right here. So now when I highlight this and execute it, you can see that here we have, again, our observed R square value from the, our uh, regression analysis. But you'll see over here the normal base confidence interval uh, ranges uh, from a lower bound of negative 0.08 uh, to an upper bound of 0.114889. So obviously this number is below the theoretical uh, limit or uh, minimum of the R square values. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So that's uh, why we would consider utilizing the percentile or the bias corrected confidence intervals. So at this point, what we'll do is we'll just type in estat bootstrap, then comma all, and highlight this and click on execute. And so now when we look at this, you can see uh, for the percentile bootstrap, the lower bound is 0 0.0055, the upper bound is 0.1826 right there, and the bias corrected ranges between 0 0.0054 to an upper bound of 0 0.045. So that is uh, basically all there is to it, to uh, generating percentile and bias corrected confidence intervals for your R square value. Thanks for watching.